Bismillah rahman rahim Hello, dear friends and students. Uh, in this video, uh, we will talk about definition of accounting, uh, objective or functions of accounting, as well as we'll talk about uh, advantage of, of accounting. So, first one is definition of accounting. Although there are several definitions of accounting in different book of accounts, and different different authors prov has provided different definition, uh, but I have combined this definition from different definitions which are provided in by different institutions or authors and books. Uh, this is a comprehensive definitions and detailed one and includes the whole objective or scope of accounting. Now let's go for the definitions. First of all, let me read it from the slide and then we will explain it. Accounting is the process of identifying, recording, classifying, summarizing, analyzing, and interpreting of financial character transactions and communicating the results or accounting reports in the form of financial statements to the users for decision making or judgment. So, the first thing that you have to learn from the accounting is accounting is the process. Accounting is not only one step. When we say accounting is the process, so it means accounting has several steps. It is not only one step, it means without a single step, you cannot receive for the final stage, which is accounting report. In order to reach for the final stage, so you have to complete several steps. These are the steps in the accounting. What are the steps? Accounting is the process of, or accounting is the steps of. Steps of what? Or process of what? Accounting is the process of identifying. Number one, we have to identify. What to identify? I will explain it. Number one, we have to identify. Number two, we have to record in the book of account. Number three, we have to classify it. Number four, we have to summarize it. Number five, we have to analyze. And number six, we have to interpret. Of what? Interpreting of financial character transactions. And after that, of course, we have to communicate the results. Result means our findings. Or result means our report in the form of financial statements. To whom we have to communicate? We have to communicate to the users. Why users need this one? They need it for decision making or judgment, right? Yes. Once again, let me read it and then we will explain it in the next slide. Accounting, once again, is the process of. Step number one, it is the process. We have to go for identify, then we have to go for recording, then we have to go for classifying, then we have to go for summarizing, then analyzing, then interpreting our financial character transactions. And after that, we have to communicate the reports to the users for what purpose for decision making sir judgment let me explain the definition of accounting in the next slide in a better way now let us say like this these are the process of accounting as i said before in the previous slide in the definition accounting starts with identifying identifying means in this case we have to identify whether the transactions that you want to record in the book of account is a character a financial character transactions or whether the transaction is a non-financial character transactions so simply we can say the whole transactions which happens in the in the business can be simply divided into two parts some of the transactions are financial character transactions and some of the transactions can be called as what non-financial character transactions now the question arises: what is financial character transactions? Those transactions which can be expressed in terms of money. It means we can show it in terms of money. For example, salary paid amount 5,000. So financial character transactions. Goods sold to Ahmad for 20,000. It's a financial character transactions. For example, rent paid amount 5,000 financial character transactions. Any transaction which include the term money can be called as what? Well as a financial character transaction. Financial character transactions also can be called as a monetary transactions. Or also we can call it as economic transactions. 
or also we can call it as a quantitative transactions quantitative transactions right yeah, that's one second thing is a non financial character transactions non financial character transactions are those transactions which are not expressed in term of money it is just the opposite of financial character transactions those transactions which are not expressed in term of money also we can call it non economic transactions also we can call it qualitative transaction it is just the quality not the quantity it is just the quality for example we can say skills he has a good skill he is a good man it's a quality we cannot recall it right so remember in this case it said number one in the accounting is identifying we have to identify whether the transactions are a financial or whether the transaction is a non-financial Remember that in accounting, we record only these transactions. Those transactions which are expressed in term of money can be recorded in the book of account. These transactions cannot be recorded in the book of account. Why? Because these are non-financial. Non-financial cannot be recorded. When we say we cannot record in the book of account, it doesn't mean that we don't have record of this one in the organization. We have record of this one in the organization, but not in the accounting department. You may have it in the HR department, you may have it in the marketing department, you may have it in some other departments, but we cannot record it in the book of accounts in the field of accounting. Step number one. So now let us say we have identified, suppose there are 100 transactions, which are financial character transactions. After this step, we have to go for the next step of accounting, which is the step of what? Now we understood that out of several transactions, how many of them are financial. So when you got that these transactions are financial and we are able to record in the book of account, then start recording. Start recording by date wise. For example, this transaction happened on January, record on January. This one happened on February, record on February. This one happened on March, record on March. January, March, April, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, April, December, right? So by this wise record, it not only month, even day is also important. Suppose this is on 1st January, 2nd January, 3rd January, 4th January, February, and so on. So record the transaction in the book of account by date wise, right? So suppose uh, we have, in this case, nine transactions, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. It depends on the nature of the business and depends on the size of the business. Depends on the size of the business, you may have millions and millions of transactions during the year. So all of them should be recorded in the book of account. And for this purpose, you may have a bigger book. Or if you don't have a bigger book, then you may have a proper software. So you record all of them in a software, right? So step number two is just recording. How you record it? How you can record in the book of account, of course, we will talk later on during the semester. But for the time being, just record in the book of account, right? And also remember that we said X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z can be anything. X, Y, Z, for example, can be commission. This can be salary of employees. This can be food expenses. This can be account of Ahmad. This can be account of Mahmoud. This can be bank account. This can be tax to the Minister of Finance. This can be penalties. This can be anything, right? So as a, as a simple city, or in order to sim simplify, so we have just mentioned X, Y, Z. So record the transaction in the book of account in this way. After a step of recording, the next step is a step of classifying. See, guys, let us assume that you have a bigger book and size of your organization is also, for example, large. Suppose you have million transactions. Out of this million transactions, suppose hundred of them are belong to Ahmad. And suppose, uh, for example, 200 of them is belong to Mahmoud and 300 of them are belong to Ali and so on. If transaction regarding Ahmad, suppose one transaction is in page one of your notebook. The next transaction is in page 20. The next transaction is in page 100. The next transaction is in page 5000, for example, and so on. If this is so, one transaction is recorded in one page, next transaction is recorded in another page, next transaction is recorded in another page. So if this is so, can you say that, for example, how many transactions happened regarding Ahmad? 
And what was the effect of that one in, in the book of Ahmad? Definitely our answer is no. So in order to be able, for example, how many transactions happened regarding Ahmad, how many transactions regarding, happened regarding Mahmoud, and what was the effect of those transactions for Ahmad, and what was the effect of those transactions for Mahmoud, and so on, the next step of accounting, or we have to go for the next step of accounting, which is the step of what classifying. In this step, we group it. This step also can be called as the step of grouping. We group it. All those transactions which are belong to X, we record together. All those transactions which are belong to Y, we record together. All those transactions which are belong to Z, we record it together. Unless to record the transaction in one place, you cannot finalize it. Unless the whole transaction regarding Y are to get recorded together, we cannot finalize regarding Y. What happened regarding Y? For example, let us say a simple example. Suppose excess account of Ahmad. Today, Ahmad deposit to the bank. Tomorrow, Ahmad withdraw from the bank. Deposit to the bank, withdraw from the bank. Deposit to the bank, withdraw from the bank. Deposit to the bank, withdraw from the bank. During the year, 100 times he made deposit and also made withdraw. And this to record it all together, definitely you cannot finalize or you cannot get the final result. Uh, let me give a simple example. For example, you find out a bundle of currencies, right? In this bundle of currency, it is mix of euro, mix of pound, dollar, Afghani, and so on. It is totally mixed. Unless you classify it properly, can you find out, for example, how much is the value of all these currencies? Definitely answer is no. Why? Because it is totally mixed. So how can you find the value? The value can be found out that all dollars are recorded separately, all euros are recorded separately, then all Afghanis are recorded separately, and all of them are to be collected separately. And after that, we can find out, for example, how much is the value of all Afghani, how much is the value of all, for example, rupees, and how much is the value of all dollars, and so on. Then you can find out how much is the overall value. A step of classifying is basically in this way, right? So this was the step of what classifying. First, we have identified, then we recorded in the book of account, then we summarize group 1x, group 2y, and group 3z, right? After this step, the next step is a step of summarizing. Now we have to summarize the transactions. Suppose these three transactions are regarding x. X1 suppose might be a positive transaction. X2 might be negative transactions. X3 might be positive. The same case with the Y might be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and negative. Okay? So let us say that, for example, transaction X is a positive transaction. Transaction X1 is a positive, X2 is negative, and X3 is also positive. Let us say, for example, these two are positive, only one negative, the summary might be a positive. Regarding Y also, this is positive, negative, and negative, summary might be negative. Regarding Z also, this is positive, positive, one negative, the summary might be negative, right? In this stage, we use the term positive and negative. Why? Because it is only the introductory class. But later on, instead of positive and negative, we use the term debits and credit. For the time being, assume that, as debit, assume, uh, this one as a positive or negative, right? So later on, of course, uh, when we explain what is debit and credit, then we will use the term debit and credit. So let us say once again, a step of summarizing, all three x, one of x is positive, the next one is negative, the next one is positive. So overall, result of x is positive. Overall, result of y is negative. And overall, result of z is also positive, right? Okay. Suppose that if, uh, if, this is, if this is account of Ahmad, Ahmad deposit to the bank, Ahmad withdraw from the bank. Ahmad deposit to the bank, Ahmad withdraw from the bank. If number of deposit of Ahmad to the bank is more, finally Ahmad will have some amount to the bank. Let us say Y is account of Mahmoud. Mahmoud deposit to the bank, Mahmoud withdraw from bank, Mahmoud withdraw from bank. Finally, account of Mahmoud will be negative. The same cases, for example, with the next Mr. Ali, for example. Ali deposit to the bank, deposit to the bank, deposit to the bank, uh, withdraw from the bank. Two deposit, one withdraw. Let us assume that amount of deposit and withdraw is the same. Finally, Mahmoud or Ali also will have some amount to the bank. So this is called what? A step of 
summarizing. After a step of summarizing, the next step is a step of analyzing and interpreting. Here we explain that why the summary is positive or why the summary is negative, right? So here, after finding the positive and negative, here we explain that, oh, yes, so x is positive, why x was positive? Suppose, for example, y is negative, why y is negative? z is positive, right? So y, z is positive. So now let's take a, another simple example and instead of x, y, z, put some figures here, right? And find out the result. Once again, a step of identifying. We know what is a step of identifying. After identifying, for example, let us uh, say instead of x, y, z, we have taken some other accounts. A step of recording. Suppose transaction was regarding rent. We recorded the rent transaction. Transaction was regarding commission, we record that one. Transaction regarding bank account. Again, rent account, commission account, bank account. Rent account, commission account, bank account. So we have recorded all these transactions by date wise. Don't forget that when this is by date wise, right? After this, we classified, for example, group one includes all rents. Group two includes all commissions. Group three includes all bank accounts. After this one, is step three, for example, rent one might be positive, rent two might be negative, rent three might be positive. Again, the summary is positive. See, in this case, once again, I'm saying that in, in accounting, we don't use the term positive and negative, but we have our own words, but now it is not the time to explain those things, right? Suppose uh, uh, sometime you receive rent from some, someone, you record as positive rent. Sometimes you pay rent for someone, you record as negative rent. Again, you receive from someone, it's positive. So the totally, it shows that you are receiving parties more than you are payment parties. Commission also the same. Suppose you receive commission, you paid commission, you paid commission. Finally, total payment is more. Again, the same with bank account. You deposit to the bank account, you deposit to the bank account, you withdraw from the bank account. So if amounts are the same, finally, your deposit will be more than your, your withdrawal. In this case, now we want to go a little bit in deep for the step of analyzing and interpreting. Analyzing simply means use ratios, use percentages, use graphs, as well as use the charge, charts to highlight the significant financial trends and relationships. So after a step of summarizing, of course, we make the financial statements, but we will explain it later on. On the financial statement, so we have to put the steps of analyzing and interpreting and all. Analyzing simply means we have to use several ratios, we have to take some percentage, we have to draw the graphs, we have to make some charts in order to find out the relationships or in order to find out the trends and the items of financial statements. It means the report that we want to provide, we should provide it in a better way. If you want to find out, if you want to make your report in a better way, so you have to use the ratios, you have to find out some percentage. For example, one of the use of the percentage. In the last year, your sales was 100 percentage, but now your sales is 120 percentage. It means it is increased by 20 percentage as compared to the previous year. We also draw the graphs. So whether the, the graph is upward moving, or whether the graph is downward moving. So it shows basically the relationship between items of financial statement. After analyzing, the next step is interpretation. An interpretation means, uh, in this case, we explain. We explain the use, we explain the meaning, as well as we use, we explain the limitation of the, the reported data. It means, the ratio which are taken there, the, the percentage which are taken there, the graph and the chart which are taken for us. So we have to explain the meaning of each. We have to explain, for example, the use of each, for example, what is the purpose of this ratio? What is the use of this one? What are different limitations in the charts, for example, or we can say in the graph or in the percentage, or what are different limitations in the financial statements? So this was, uh, the definition of accounting, if you want to, re you want me to review once again. So this first step was identifying, we have to record whether the 
transactions are financial character transactions are not so we can record only these transactions in the book of account after that we have to record and we have to record it by date wise after that we have to classify it properly then we have to go for the step of summarizing find out the summary of each after summary we have to make a proper analyzing and interpretations in order to analyze we have to use ratios graph presentation and so on not only this one there are other methods to analyze it and after the analyze so we have to go for the explanation and the usage of this one the limitations and the meaning of each but remember that analyzing and interpretations are two sides of the same kind analyzing without interpretation is useless and interpretation is not possible without analyzing so this was the definition of accounting now i'm going to yeah one more step here so the the after analyzing and interpretation of financial statements of course we provide accounting reports also we can call it a financial report accounting report or financial report but remember that this financial report which you want to provide it should be properly standardized what is standardized it standardized means in order to provide the financial reports or accounting reports we have our standards we have our standard means so we have our proper rules and regulations so you cannot provide your financial statement if in different formats and different figures and with different uh, uh, items or components so in order to provide your financial statements so you should follow the standards and we will explain the standards later on inshallah now let us go for the next point after definition of accounting which is objective or functions of accounting what is the objective of accounting it means why we should go for accounting number one the first objective of accounting is to keep a permanent record of business transactions objective number one so accounting uh, it, it take or keep the record of business transactions in the business it means without accounting you cannot take the record of business transactions so it keep a permanent record of business transactions one of the advantage or objective of accounting is that it takes the permanent record of business transactions right so it means if there is no accounting you cannot take a record so without record you cannot of course provide a report if there is no report it means there is no decisions so it is totally useless so the first step is so it should take a, a record so accounting take a permanent record of business transactions the second thing to a certain profit or loss of the business step number two objective or function of accounting is to find out whether your business made profit or whether your business suffered loss how we calculate that one we will do it inshallah later on next objective of financial statement is to ascertain the financial position of the business next step is financial position what is financial position for this one also will go in the second chapter but for the time being financial statements or financial position simply means so it shows that how much asset we have in the business and how much liability we have in the business asset mean daraii and liability means cruise whether our assets are equal to our liability or not and it should be equal if it is equal it is fine otherwise it means there's a problem with the business so number three number four objective of accounting is to control expenditure of the business expenditure means of course masarif so it control the expenses of the business right through this one we can control or we can put some pressures on different uh, organization units in order to reduce the expenditure or expenses next one is fifth one to calculate the amount due and the amount okay to calculate the amount due to and due from others due to means for example we have to calculate that how much we have to pay for the others for example you purchased a machine from Ali and you promise to pay in the future so accounting show that for example how much you have to pay to Ali or for example you sold a machine to Mr. Mahmoud right 
and Mr. Mahmoud promised you to pay you in the future. So how much you should receive from that one? How much you should pay for the others and how much you should receive from others as included in the objective of account. Number five, number six, to ascertain the cost of production as well as selling price. It is through the accounting we can find out, for example, how much is the cost of the particular product and how much is supposed selling price. Let us assume that we want to produce a marker. Suppose we have a manufacturing company and we want to produce marker. Marker, simple marker. And in this case, we find out how much is the cost of each marker. Let us assume that we calculate and we found that the cost of each marker is, for example, $2, right? And on that one, we had some profit and we found the selling price. So simply we can say through the accounting, we find out, for example, how much is the cost and how much we should sell it in the market. Even suppose if it is not a manufacturing company. So how much we purchased a particular product and how much we should sell it in the market in order to cover the cost as well as in order to make some profitability for the business. This is the objective of accounting. The next one is to provide information for decision making. Yes, without accounting information, you cannot make a suitable decision in the business. Any sort of decisions that you want to make in the business, it needs information. Especially, of course, accounting information. Doesn't matter who you are, who are you, it depends of course, on the on the your partnership with the business, that who are you? But still, if you're the owner of the business, if you're the investors, if you're the employee, that we will study later on. It depends, but still, you need accounting information. Let us assume that, for example, you're the manager of the business. If you're the manager of the business, of course, you need accounting information for day-to-day -day business decisions. Business decision means different decision. For example. Decision might be regarding investment, decision might be, for example, regarding purchase, regarding, for example, selling of a particular product and so on. Any sort of decisions that you need, you need information and information can be provided through accounting. So these are the objective of accounting. Number eight, to satisfy the requirement of law. Accounting record does not only require because of our decisions or because of this purpose which we mentioned. Accounting is required also as per the law. As per the law, for example, as per the company law, as per the tax law, as per the banking law, and so on. It depends on your business. As per the law, you need to provide a report to show that whether your business is going well or not, right? Whether your business is, for example, suitable for the society or not, and, and so on. If once again we go back with the objective of accounting, it takes a permanent record of the business. It shows the profitability of the business. It shows the financial position of the business that we will explain both of these later on. It put control on expenditure. It shows that how much we have to pay to others and how much we have to receive from others. It also finds out the cost of our product. It also tells us, for example, how much we have to sell in the market. It helps us for decision makings and also it satisfies the legal requirement of the business. Next one is importance, uses or advantage of accounting. Accounting has its own advantage. The first one is this one. The first one is uh, this one. It facilitates comparative, comparative study of current year's profits, sales, expenditure, ETC with those of the previous year. Point number one, through the data which are provided in the accounting, we can compare the performance of this year with the performance of the previous year. Or even we can say, we can compare the performance of our business with the performance of another businesses. Might be our competitors, right? So we have to compare our performance with their performance, whether our performance was good or their performance is good. Whether our performance was good in this year or whether the performance was good in the previous year. 
you can compare profit, you can compare sales, you can compare expenditure, you can compare anything. This is one of the advantage of accounting. The next advantage of accounting is it helps to forecast the future. Forecast simple means, for example, uh, we estimate the future, right? One of the advantage of accounting is that we need to forecast the future. We need to, for example, expect the future, make some expectation for the future, right? How much will be, for example, our profit in the future? Or how will be our performance in the future? And of course, later on you will see that we forecast the future of the business based on the past performance. The data which is provided in this year for us, and of course, uh, uh, this data which is provided right now for me it shows the performance of the business in the last year so based on the last year performance of the business we can forecast the future of the business why this is so because usually future somehow depends on the past it there is a trend basically between the past as well as between the future so anything happened in the past may happen in the future as well if there is no some exceptional cases in most of the case when we analyze the future of the business, we check the past record of the business. Not only in the case of the business, even it can be in the case of humans as well. When you want to be friend, for example, with Mahmoud, you check the past background of Mahmoud, right? Suppose in the case of bank, if a banker wants to provide loan to someone, first of all, the banker check the past background of this one, whether the person has made a default with the previous bankers or not. If there is no default of this person with the previous bankers, then bankers may provide loan to him. Otherwise, they will not provide, right? So the past performance can help us to check the future of this one. The next usage of accounting information is it provides information for judging the efficiency of management. In order to give comments on the efficiency of the management, we need accounting information. We need to check that whether they our management team was efficient in their performance in the last year or not, whether the management was effective or not, whether they achieved the goal of the business in the last year or not, accounting information is the must. Next one is, it helps in ascertaining the value of business at the time of purchase or sales of the business. Let us say that, for example, we have a bigger business and we want to purchase other businesses. Or for example, the, there is another bigger business and they want to purchase our business. If our business want to purchase other businesses or other businesses want to purchase our business, it means our organizations, we have, in this case, we need to find out the value of this organization. If you want to purchase other company, you have to find the value of that one. Or if the other company want to purchase your business, so they have to find the value of your company. Value of your company can be found out through the accounting information. Without that, it's not possible. The next advantage is it is a good proof. It's a good proof in the court of law regarding the transaction of the business. It's a proof. Of course, this is very important for us. The record of accounting in the book of accounts basically can be used as a proof, can be considered as a evidence, can be considered as a testimony in the court, right? For example, at the end of the year, we show that, for example, our business made only one lakh profit. But the court may say, for example, no, you made two lakh profit. If they want, if they say two lakh profit and we show only one lakh profit, in this case, we need to go for the book of account and show and check the books or the documents that how much profit we made during the year. So it is just the evidence or it's the, the proof. So the book of account can be considered as a proof as well. Next one, it is useful in getting loan, as I said in the case of uh, this one. So even accounting information is useful in the, in the case of getting loan. Of course, it is in the case of organization, not in the case of persons. Even it can be in the case of persons as well, but usually it is in the case of organization. Suppose our organization, suppose Cardone University, want to take some loan from a Z bank. Unless Cardone University provide accounting information to a Z bank, a Z bank will not provide a dollar of loan. Why? Because they need to check that, for example, if we provide loan to Cardone University, 
whether Cardone will be able to repay this loan back or not, whether the Cardone University has enough security for us or not. So that is why they need to check accounting information to satisfy their needs. The next one, it is useful to employees to demand for more wage if the business is profitable. Even accounting information is useful for the employees as well. If the employees find out that there is a good profitability in the business, why we should not enjoy from this profit? So in that case, they may demand for their supervisors, they may demand, they may ask their, for example, uh, we can say bosses to please increase our salary, please increase our benefits as well. Why? Because the organization make huge amount of profit and this huge profit is of course because of the effort of this employees. And finally, if there is no profit for these people, so what is, what is the, the advantage for the employees? Definitely, they will get dismotivated. So in order to have more profit for these people, there should be uh, some sort of uh, compensation for the employees as well to have some benefit from the business. The next one is, it helps in prevention and detection of error and fraud. The next one, accounting prevent as well as detect errors and fraud from the business. What is error and fraud? So of course we will talk later on, but for the time being, so prevention of error or detection of error and fraud is possible through the accounting. Why? Because we have rules and regulations and through those rules and regulations, we can prevent errors and fraud from the accounting information. Last one is, it helps in complying with the cert certain legal formalities like filing of income tax and sales tax and so on. Of course, for the filing of income tax and so on, accounting information is the mask. Without having a proper uh, record of accounting information, uh, you cannot, for example, fulfill your income tax return as well as sales tax return with the Ministry of uh, Finance and so on. So we will stop here. Thank you so much. So please watch our video and for the upcoming videos, please subscribe our channel so you will receive the next next videos and of course not videos of accounting. Uh, you may receive the videos of finance as well. Thank you so much.